Today, our job is to examine the potential uses of molecular hydrogen. We sort of initiated this particular talk on our last lecture when we looked at why molecular hydrogen is so important. When we're talking about molecular hydrogen, we're not talking about mixing it in water at this moment. We're really talking about, for the most part, inhaling this gas. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch Genn. Now, inhaled hydrogen gas has so many uses. We're going to just look at a few of the really important potential uses at this moment. And our next installation will certainly look at how I use it clinically within my practice on patients. Well, inhaled hydrogen gas has been studied for the potential to relieve various conditions, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and lung injury. Even there are papers written about its use in lung cancer as well. Now, again, that makes sense. Um, I had a mentor at one time and said, if you ever want to use something, Mitchell, for medicine, put the medication where it belongs. Well, inhaling hydrogen directly into the lung, having the properties of the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and modulation of the apoptosis and the vasodilatation we talked about originally are now basically going to help us uh, be able to determine how we can use this. We're putting it right into the lung. It may also improve lung function while it reduces respiratory uh, inflammation. So people with COPD or bronchitis that are ongoing and chronic that have some inflammation, this may be perfect for them to reduce that inflammation. Inhaled molecular hydrogen has also been looked at to protect against radiation-induced lung injury. So even when someone is undergoing the traditional cancer therapies and radiation, you know radiation will hit some of the good cells, but molecular hydrogen concurrently can actually help prevent damage to those good cells too. It's also been shown to have a very good protective effect on the lungs uh, from reducing inflammation, oxidative stress, just in general. So if you have patients that in general get colds or things of this nature too often, then one of the things that you can do is use this as a preventative. Um, also, athletes have found that there is a benefit because it enhances exercise performance and reduces muscle fatigue. Now, it's an amazing thing. By breathing in this hydrogen gas, your performance and your capability of your exercise performance goes up significantly. Now, here's what I like. Um, the potential in neurodegenerative disorders, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, reducing inflammation of the brain and oxidative stress issues of the brain. Now, we have seen and we have done on many occasions, we have taken people that have neurodegenerative disorders like Parkinson's. We've taken patients that have had difficulty with um, studies such as WAVI. WAVI is a conglomerate of studies that literally look at the functioning of the brain. And we've given them an hour breathing in of molecular hydrogen and every single parameter that we have tested that was abnormal at the beat before breathing in the hydrogen has improved significantly within one hour after. So this potential in these diseases are extensively being looked at and written about currently. It's already been written that Parkinson has a 30 to 33% improvement rate by using ongoing chronic use of molecular hydrogen. Inhaled molecular hydrogen has also had a positive effect on reducing inflammation and promoting a healthy gut microbiota. You know there's a microbiome, a, a mixture of 500 different species of different bacteria and fungus that live in the gut. If they live in harmony, there's no issue, especially since the gut produces most of the neurotransmitters. But if they are not in harmony, there's an issue. Well, molecular hydrogen can help. You can think, well, how can molecular hydrogen help? Well, I can see how it can help for respiratory because it's going directly into the lungs, but how's it do it for the brain and how's it do it for the gut? How's it do it for the cardiovascular because hydrogen molecule is so, so small it easily can traverse any of the set membranes that we have or any of the things that try to block its movement, such as the blood brain barrier, etc. So pretty much most of the chronic disorders may see an improvement 
by using as an additional modality molecular hydrogen on a regular basis. On our next installment, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we use this? How long do we use it? How often should you use it? What dis or disorders have I seen this amazing and, and great results with? You'll find that potential for a molecular hydrogen is so great that it pretty much should sit in every integrative physician, if not every family practice, in, um, internist, cardiologist, neurologist. Yeah, pretty much all of the medicine offices because of its great potential to help someone with pretty much zero side effects. Makes sense, right? Do we have and can we do this? And the answer, of course, is yes. Next time, again, we're going to take a critical look at the clinical applications as I have used them and where you can use them in your practice as well. I'm Dr. Mitch Ken. Thank you so much for watching.